Hi, and welcome to episode nine of Understanding Darktable. Uh, just for the record, we are still on version 2.4.4 on Ubuntu. Uh, if that ever changes, I'll let you know. I mentioned at the end of the last video that in this video, we'd start looking at the darkroom area and how things work there. And I figured that in this video, we would start with just a tour of the interface uh, rather than looking into specific modules, we we'll just sort of get familiar with what's what in the darkroom environment. So we start off with a thumbnail image in the top left hand corner and you can zoom in on your image in the main window in the middle here and as you zoom in you'll get this little white rectangle over that thumbnail image and that allows you to get an idea of exactly where you are in your image when you're zoomed in. And you can left click and drag that around if you just need to zoom around to see different parts of the image. Uh, you've got a little drop down beside that which has five options, small, fit to screen, 50%, 100% and 200%. As you would imagine, small will zoom your whole image right out to a fairly small view. Fit to screen will fit whatever is the longest dimension of the image to either the height or the width of the screen so that nothing is cropped. 50% will zoom to 50% of the original pixel data in size. 100% will do a 100% zoom and 200% will go a little bit closer than that. Now, interestingly, if we are at fit to screen, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out, like so. However, the mouse wheel will only go as far as 100%. So if you want to go to that 200% view, you will need to use that little drop down arrow beside the thumbnail view in the top left hand corner. Below that we've got snapshots and I'll leave snapshots until we actually get into creating some changes to images via the development modules because snapshots are kind of related to that. The history stack just shows you everything that has been done to an image from the moment it was imported into Darktable through to wherever you're currently at. At any point you can click on a previous stage of the history stack to jump backwards in time and at the bottom of the history stack you have this option to compress the history stack. If you have selected any stage of the history stack that is not the top stage or the most recent change made and you compress the history stack, anything that was done later than where you're currently at, so in other words steps four and five here because I'm on step three, those steps will be discarded and step three base curve would become the last entry in the history stack. We'll look into that in greater detail down the track. Next up we've got the color picker and as you would imagine this will allow you to sample colors from your image if you need to do that for some reason. Next we've got the tagging module and this is an exact replica of the tagging module that we find in the light table view. In light table view it appears on the right hand side, in the darkroom view it appears on the left hand side. Uh, next we've got image information, again this is a replica of the image information module from the light table view. And finally on the left hand side we've got the mask manager. And again this is something I can't really go into until we get a little further down the track with developing images. Okay, in the top right hand corner we've got the histogram. Now, if you're familiar with Adobe Lightroom or any other similar image editing program, you're probably already familiar with the concept of a histogram. It shows you the intensity of pixels that are dark and the intensity of pixels that are light and the intensity of the pixels in the mid-range. What I do like about the histogram view in Darktable is when you mouse over the histogram, you'll see where my mouse is at the moment, sort of the, shall we say, the right hand 75% of the histogram gets this light grey box over the top of it. And if I mouse over, we'll call it the left hand 25%, we get this other slim grey box. 
those two highlights represent parameters within the exposure module. Namely, on this top 75% of the image, that is the exposure control. Uh, and if I just zoom out of my image here, uh, I can left click and drag left to decrease exposure or I can left click and drag right to increase exposure. The little 25% sliver on the left allows me to adjust just the black point of the image. So I can left click and drag right to bring the black point up. And we can see there that that's reduced the intensity of the dark pixels. Or I can left click and drag left to move the black point down. So we'll see when we get to the exposure module a little bit more of that relationship. Immediately below the histogram, we've got a bunch of icons here that represent different things. The first one is show only active modules. So any development modules that you have actually used, in other words, that are switched on, will show in this list. The next one, is your star, which is your favorites. So any modules that you've marked as favorites, and again, we'll get to this in a minute, will appear in this list. The next one is your basic group. The next is the tone group, then the color group, the correction group, and the effects group. Now these last five from basic, tone, color, correction, and effects, you can change which modules appear in there, but you cannot make a module which doesn't belong in any one of those groups appear in that group. That's what your favorite list is for. Now down the bottom, we've got a button that says more modules. And I have to say, as a new user, when I first came to Darktable in 2016, and I opened up this more modules list, it absolutely freaked me out. I was like, what? How many modules are here? How am I going to understand what all of these things do? And the reality is, as you become familiar with Darktable, you'll find that there's maybe 10 or 15 or maybe 20 modules that you'll use all of the time and a whole bunch that you'll never go near. For me, it's very much like that. There's probably 15 modules that I use all of the time, and the rest I very rarely go to. Now, any module that is currently not in use will have this dark gray background in the list. If I click on it once, it gets a light gray background, and that tells me that this image has now been made active, and in this case, it's part of the effects group. If I click that colorized module again, it gets a star, which means it's now been added to my favorites list and will appear in that list of favorite modules. And then I can click it a third time to make it inactive once more. So it's a three-way switch for all of these modules. Click once to make it active within whichever of those five groups it belongs in. Click it a second time to make it a favorite so that it'll appear in your favorites list. Click it a third time to make it inactive everywhere in Darktable. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of modules to choose from. There must be 50 or 60 odd modules in here. And honestly, like I said, I use maybe 15 of them on a regular basis. Every now and again, I'll think to myself, oh, I need such and such a feature and I know it's there in another module that I don't normally use and so I'll go and switch it on. What you could do, and it's entirely up to you, is simply put every single module into the on state so that every module will appear on one of those five, depending on which group it belongs to and then just favorite the ones that you are going to use on a regular basis. That's what I've done. I have my favorites group. It's all the stuff that I use on a regular basis. And if I ever need one of those things that I rarely use, 
I'll go over to whichever group it belongs to and find that module and use it. Now, down the bottom here, we've got some things like quick access to presets of your favorites. So if you have created favorites within a module, and again, I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, they will appear here. So these are modules within which I have created certain presets and I can quickly access those presets off this little hamburger menu at the bottom left hand corner of the main part of the image. Next, we've got quick access for applying any of your styles. And again, we haven't really looked into styles yet, so we'll come back to that in a future video. Next, we've got toggle raw overexposed indication. Right click for options. Now, it's conceivable that you can process an image and make things clip, but the raw data itself is not clipped. So this particular icon here, the one with the red, green and blue dots on it, is for inspecting the state of over or under exposure of the raw data, not of your current state of processing. So if you've got an image that you think was cooked, you can switch this on and if there is any overexposure in the raw data, as there is right here on the hair on the back of my head, it will show up in this view. Next, we've got the normal over and under exposure indicator, as if you've come from Lightroom, you would be familiar with. And I think, again, it's the O key to switch it on and off. So it will show up with red pixels wherever there's overexposure in this processed version of the image. So if I was to decrease this exposure control, we will see that that red indication disappears when there is no clipping evident. Next to that, we've got the soft proofing options for our monitor. Uh, this is not an area I am particularly familiar with, so I will do a little bit of reading before I come back to explain that properly. And finally, we've got the gamut warning. So this will become very handy if you are in the habit of oversaturating your colors. If you saturate colors to the point where they won't reproduce properly on either printed paper or on a monitor or whatever, you can check that gamut warning with that indicator in the bottom right hand corner of the main view. And then down the bottom, we've got our film strip view of the current crop of images that we are looking at. So that is pretty much it for the darkroom view. In the next video, we will start looking at processing images, I think. Yeah, looking forward to that. Okay, talk to you soon.